here and you're not ready for revival, we pray before revival is out tonight, uh, you get saved and ready for revival. Amen. Have you come expecting from the Lord tonight? Yeah. Amen. I know it's been, a, it's been a Monday. Can you say amen? amen? But I'm glad that the Lord is still a Lord of everything yes. on Monday. And I am ready to receive from the Lord tonight. Would you stand with me and let's invite His presence into this house tonight. Just believe and He's going to meet us here in a special way. Heavenly Father, we love you tonight. Thank you for the power and the presence of the Holy One. Thank you for the Spirit of God that is real and effective in our hearts and in our lives. And thank you for Monday Night Revival. Lord, just the joy of the Lord that I feel in my heart, the liberty, Lord, that we have felt around this place the last several, several services. And Father, I pray tonight will be no different, God, that you'll touch the man of God as he brings the word of the Lord tonight. Lord, receive our praise and receive our worship move in every part of this service and, and let everything that we do tonight be done to give you praise and, and honor and glory and we will forever be thankful for it in the name of Jesus we pray everybody said amen and amen let's worship the Lord together tonight Is the time to worship? Come, now is the time to give your heart. Come, just as you are to worship. Come, just as you are before your God. tongue will confess you are God and one day every knee will bow still the greatest treasure remains for those who gladly choose you now so willingly we choose to surrender our lives and willingly our knees will bow and with all our hearts so mind and strength we gladly choose you now now is the time to worship. Come. Hallelujah. Now is the time to give your heart. Come. Just as you are to worship. Come. Just as you are before your will confess you are God one day every knee will bow you're still the greatest treasure remains for those who gladly choose you now so willingly we choose to surrender our lives and willingly our knees will bow and with all our hearts so mind and strength we gladly choose you now Come, now is the time to worship. Come, now is the time to give your heart. Come, just as you are to worship. Come, just as you are before your God. me. 
me remember you, Lord, as I fight the good fight. You are there by my side. You will never depart. Yes, Lord, it's worth it all because it's all about you. Oh, it's all about you. Yes, it's all about you, Lord. Every song that I sing and every prayer that I pray and everything I do, it's all about you. Help me remember, dear Lord, to keep my eyes on the prize. For soon the trumpet will sound and I'll be heaven bound. Yes, Lord, it's worth it all because it's all about you. Yeah, oh, it's, it's all, all about you. you. It's all about you, Lord. And every song that I sing and every prayer that I pray and everything I do, it's all about you. Help me remember, dear Lord, as I fight the good fight. You are there by my side. You will never depart. Yes, Lord, it's worth it all because it's all about you. Hallelujah. Oh, it's all about you. Yes, it's all about you, Lord. Every song that I sing and every prayer that I pray and everything I do, it's all about you. Help me remember, dear Lord, to keep my eyes on the prize. For soon the trumpet will sound and I'll be heaven bound. Yes, Lord, it's worth it all because it's all about you. Yes, and it's, it's all, all about you. Oh, it's all about you, Lord. Every song that I sing and every prayer that I pray and everything I do, oh, it's all about you. Yes, it's, it's all about you. It's all about you, Lord. Every song that I sing and every prayer that I pray and everything I do, it's all about you. When I think about the Lord, how He saved me, how He raised me, how He filled me with the Holy Ghost, He healed me to the uttermost. And when I think about the Lord, how He picked me up, He turned me around, how He placed my feet on solid ground. It makes me want to shout, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, Lord, you're worthy of all of the glory, all of the honor, and all of the praise. It makes me want to shout, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, Lord, you're worthy of all of the glory, all of the honor, and all of the praise. Oh, when I think about the Lord, how He saved me, how He raised me, how He healed me, the Holy Ghost, He healed me to the uttermost. And when I think about the Lord, how He picked me up, He turned me around, how He placed my feet on the solid ground. Oh, it makes me want to shout hallelujah thank you jesus lord you're worthy of all of the glory all of the honor and all of the praise oh, it makes me want to shout hallelujah thank you jesus 
Lord, you're worthy of all of the glory, all of the honor, and all of the praise. Oh, it makes me want to shout, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, you're worthy of all of the glory, all of the honor, and all of the praise. And when I think about the Lord, how he saved me, how he raised me, how he healed me with the Holy Ghost. He healed me to the uttermost. And when I think about the Lord, how he picked me up, he turned me around, how he placed my feet on this solid ground. It makes me want to shout. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Lord, you're worthy of all of the glory, all of the honor, and all of the praise. It makes me want to shout. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Lord, you're worthy of all of the glory, all of the honor, and all of the praise. Oh, it makes me want to shout. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Lord, you're worthy of all of the glory, all of the honor, and all of the praise. Oh, and when I think about the Lord, how he saved me, how he raised me, how he filled me with the Holy Ghost, he healed me to the uttermost when i think about the lord how he picked me up he turned me around how he placed my feet oh yeah oh let's sing it now sing it it makes me want to shout hallelujah thank you jesus lord you're worthy of all of the glory all of the honor and all of the it makes me want to shout hallelujah thank you jesus lord you're worthy of all of the glory all of the honor and all of the praise it makes me want to shout what would you say amen for that tonight hallelujah when i think about all he's done for me even on a monday amen makes me want to give the Lord praise and honor and glory. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord tonight. What a joy it is to be in Monday Night Revival. Just believe in the Lord for a move of His presence, not only tonight, but this entire week. Even heard from Brother Cooper this morning. He sent me a text. He says, I'm praying you guys have a, an awesome or dynamic or good. One of those words, good revival. I told him, I, I said, I thank you for that. We are believing that God's going to show up in this place and, and deliver some folks and set some folks free. And He's going to baptize in the Holy Ghost this week. I'm just looking for the church to be revived. Can you say amen for that tonight? Amen. Are you glad to have Pastor Dustin and Sister Holly back home? Amen. Missed them yesterday. Colton and Kyle and uh, Micah, we're really glad y'all came back. Amen. That's really who we missed yesterday. Glad to have them back. And I understand they were, uh, they, were, they were peeking on us during services yesterday. I heard all about it a little bit today. So uh, glad to have them back. Good to have Brother, uh, Brother Eric with us. Uh, one of our uh, Sister Karen's brothers, Sister Edna's son, goes over to Gray Street. Good to have him with us tonight. Good to have all the home folks. Amen. Even with sickness and all the things that are going on. What a wonderful Monday night crowd. I'm just delighted that you're here. You're here. You might as well just get in. Can you say? Amen. You might as well just say, all right, they've already, as Brother Jarman says, they've already seen your car in the parking lot, so you might as well uh, just go ahead and have church. Amen. It's a great, great way to start this. So glad to have Brother Jerry Daniel with us. I'll mention him a little later on in service tonight. I did get word just before service, and I think it's okay to mention this publicly, but uh, Sister Leslie's brother Phil did pass away earlier today. Um, I did get that information just before service. So as we're praying tonight, uh, Sister Leslie is very sick. She was out yesterday and out, out of office today, out of school today, uh, out of work. So uh, she's sick. And on top of that, we got news this afternoon or late, just before church, that 
her brother Phil has been very, very ill, but he passed away. So I ask that you remember uh, them in prayer tonight, that God will strengthen them and be with them throughout this process. And I know that, I know that God's able. Let, let me just as, uh, just as a way of, of safety and a way of security, a lot of crazy things are happening around our world. And, and this should go without saying, but um, just trust me when I say it is to your benefit to make sure your vehicle is locked when you are at any place, probably including your home. Amen? And especially when you're at this property or you're up, you, I say you're uptown, we, we, we are in Orlando, but when you go to places of business, can I encourage you, can I just be pastor in light of uh, just recent events, uh, maybe locally and, and, and even in Texas, uh, we just need to be extra careful. And, and so uh, we're, I, I mentioned this last night, we're going to be meeting with my leadership staff and make sure that we know uh, what's going on, make sure we have looked at our plans to make sure we're as safe as possible and and you would never thought we live in that day, but we're in that day. And we cannot be too safe. And I am thankful uh, that God tells us to be wise as serpents. Amen. Harmless as doves, but wise as serpents. And uh, we need to do that. And I want to just caution you to, to do that. I did learn today that uh, one of the individuals shot, I shared this on my social media page, uh, was, the, was the son of a Church of God evangelist who was in California, I think it was, uh, Oklahoma or California, running preaching or I guess preaching doing something there he's headed back to Texas and so they put that out for the international offices today so will you remember all of that out there uh, the little bit that I've been able to keep up with the um, it's just a tragic situation 20 26 folks I believe it is now uh, that are deceased and eight of them were from the same family if I have my facts right and uh, the gunman uh, his in-laws um, mother and father-in-law uh, did attend church there but was not there yesterday. I think they were the ones in Oklahoma and the, the Church of God pastor or minister was in California. So just, just tragedy on every hand and, uh, and we need to uh, just remember that as we pray tonight, let's do that. Remember folks in our church, still many that are facing sickness and, and this crud that's going around, but I'm just believing God's going to heal them and touch them. They can get back in revival this week. Can you say amen for that? Amen. We'll be here every night, Monday night through Friday night, 7 o'clock. Uh, we will uh, be going to uh, dinner Friday night after church as is, as is customary for our church. And so if you want to join us there, uh, we'll have more details about that probably starting Wednesday night. And uh, I have already been asked a few times. So if you attend school here, um, it is routine that pastor are driving me crazy. Let me just get it out of the way right now. Brother Jerry, you'll understand in a moment. If you attend school here and you are in church and stay in church I mean you can't come for worship and then leave you know that and get in the altars and after the altar service uh, after you've done what God's asked you to do and uh, if you have a homework slip because you got homework that needs to be done if you'll bring it to me Principal Smith can't sign it Miss Wendy can't sign it Pastor Dustin can't sign it you've got to come find me I will sign the back of your homework slip and it will get you out of homework okay except for I don't give any math away. You must do math every day of your life, okay? And so I don't do math. You know that. So don't even ask. If it's on there, I, and teachers know, I don't exempt math. And if you are a high school student, I do not exempt things like your video classes, your keyboarding, your Spanish 1, Spanish 2. Okay, you must stay on schedule with those. The year will be gone before you know it, and it's too hard to catch up. So uh, I don't exempt those. Um, and if you try to stretch me on that and uh, get me in trouble with, your, with the principal, I just won't sign any homework slips for anybody, okay? And so, uh, but if, you'll, if you need, I only do that for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Friday's homework you can do over the weekend, okay? I'm not getting you out. I didn't sign them last night because that was homework that was issued on Friday. You had all weekend to do that. So only these four nights, and uh, it does not get you out of it. It just gets you uh, to reset it. Uh, where you can do it the next day. you still got to get all that work done. You know how that works. And uh, I've already had four or five kids. One wanted me to sign it already. So we don't do that. And I can't, if you don't attend school here, I can't do that for you. And I, if I could, if, if you think it'll help you, I'll write you a note. Um, but it may not, I mean, I'll try. But I, I can do that for these kids and I'll do my very best in helping you do that. As long as you're getting these orders. If you're about talking to your boyfriend and girlfriend and I see you, I ain't signing nothing for you. Amen. This is about Jesus this week. Can you say amen? And uh, glad to have Brother Daniel with us. He'll be preaching our afternoon chapel session on Wednesday. 
And so looking forward to having him in chapel with us. Looking forward to just connecting. Uh, really and truly, we don't know each other. I mean, we've seen each other. at event. I'm looking. I told him, I said, I want to pick your brain. I want to see what he's doing at Garden City. That's good. And uh, maybe we can copy some of that. Steal it. Borrow it from him. And uh, I'm going to ask him what's not going good. Because if it's not going good, I don't want to pick that up at all. Amen. Uh, we're in this thing together. And so I'm gonna, looking forward to fellowshipping with him and uh, getting to know him. And uh, we'll talk more about his wife and kids and all that later in the week. But uh, good to have you with us, and I'll, I'll mention that later. All right, ushers, come on and help me tonight. And uh, let's give a good offering. Our offerings this week will go toward revival. And uh, I didn't say much about this yesterday, and maybe I should have. But uh, uh, I ask every family unit, if you can, if you can help us by giving $25 uh, this week toward offering. I figured that up. If we, you know, If we have 40 families that do that, my math is right. That'll give us uh, plenty to take care of the evangelists. We want to make sure we take care of Brother Jerry this week. And, and we're going to. And it's going to come from us in the pews. And uh, we're going to give a good offering every night. And uh, if you want to go ahead and give that tonight and get it out of the way, then you can shout free this week. If you want to shout on credit and pay on Friday, um, that's okay too. But we might add a zero or two to it. Amen. And, uh, but let's give a good offering and believe in that the Lord's going to bless us. How many of you know you can't outgive God? But it does take finances to, to run and to do what we need to do. And we're going to take care of Brother Jerry. Uh, and uh, we're believing it's going to be uh, done because of people that are faithful on these pews. Let's pray tonight and ask God to help us. Father, we love you tonight. Thank you for the privilege we have to be in the house on a Monday night. Thank you for the spirit of worship, Lord, and the freedom I've already felt in this place, the move of your presence. And, Lord, I believe just the anticipation this congregation has to hear from the man of God and to get in these altars. And, Lord, seek your face. We're expecting things this week, believing, Lord, in faith that you're going to meet us here. Bless this offering. Take it, Lord, for the intended use. Multiply it. Let us meet the needs of this fall revival. And we will forever be thankful. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody said amen. And amen. God bless you as you give tonight. Thank you for your giving tonight. As I mentioned, Brother Jerry Daniel is a pastor at the Jacksonville Garden City Church of God. Got a wife, got three children, and they just bought a house and moved like two weeks ago. So he's been very, very busy. And they had, as I mentioned yesterday, they had their fall festival this weekend. And uh, he has, uh, he has uh, been burning the, the oil at both ends. And, uh, and I'm glad tonight he's in Okoe. Amen. And uh, I, I, I'm just the way I am with an evangelist, I, I don't expect them to be here in the morning at 8 o'clock when I get here, which in the morning it's going to be a little earlier than that, ain't it, Pastor Rick? Amen. <laughs> I think we're pulling out at 6.30 in the morning for an appointment. But uh, I don't expect them here in the morning. I do want to do lunch, and he knows that. I want them to hear from the Lord. Hopefully they've already been praying. I believe he has. And, and I want God to just pour into him what God wants him to pour into us. And I know he's got responsibilities, and I'm thankful that his wife lets him travel and his church lets him go. Um, but when he's here this week, I, I, I have asked him to come to preach to this congregation what thus saith the word of the Lord and what thus saith God. Amen? And I want you to get right in, and we are delighted to have you with us tonight. Would you make him feel welcome? Just He's not coming quite yet, but thank you for being here. And 
And uh, we're looking forward to just uh, growing a relationship together, and we want you to fill your liberty in this pulpit. Just before he comes, the youth choir's coming to sing, and uh, they'll be singing every night for us this week. So uh, they'll come, and after the youth choir is totally finished, we'll turn this over to Brother Jerry and uh, let him preach to us tonight.
Praise the Lord. Amen. Didn't these babies do good? Amen. Amen. They started singing. It's, I just about got excited. Amen. They powerful. You know, there's a special anointing when young people sing. Amen. It's a powerful touch, a powerful move, life changing, inspiring, encouraging. You know, Jesus talks about that faith of a child. I talked about this a little bit in church last night. You know, that, that childlike faith is that ignorant faith. It's the kind of faith that you can't tell them that they can't do something. They can't be something. They can't accomplish something. Because they know they can. They believe it. They believe it. You know, studies show somewhere I read a few years ago, that studies show that most children up to the age of about four years old, Somewhere around 85 to 90 percent of all children score in the genius percentile. When they enter kindergarten, the social system of schools, they ingrain in them their limitations of what they can do and what they cannot do. And by the time they leave kindergarten, that decreases down to 50 percent. By the time they're in third or fourth grade, they've ingrained that in them in possibilities. Amen. And it decreases down to about 20%. By the time they graduate high school, you find there ain't but about 2 to 3% all over that, even, that can even score in that genius percentile. Why? Because they have, they, they've lost that ignorant sense of faith. But you know what? That's the kind of faith Jesus was telling us to have. That faith that we can stand up and say, you know what? If God said we can do it, we can Amen. If God said, I can open my mouth and sing and worship and praise, I can do it and touch heaven. Amen. I can touch the throne room of grace. Amen. And he's going to meet me when I touch him. And so when they get up here and they begin to sing, it just feeds my soul. Amen. It feeds my heart, my mind, my body. Amen. Because I know they're singing, amen, not to please nobody. They're not singing because their neighbor who's in the audience, they're singing in that sense of ignorant faith. They're just singing to Jesus. Amen. And that's all that matters. Praise the Lord. Amen. We're so excited to be here tonight. Amen. I appreciate what I feel in this house. Amen. I appreciate, amen, the sweet anointing of the Holy Ghost. I'm looking forward to revival. Believe God's going to help us. Amen. Believe God's going to strengthen us. Amen. I'm looking forward to what God has in store. Amen. As I'm talking some more, if y'all would turn to 1 Peter chapter 1, I want to say, first of all, thank you so much. Amen. For the honor to be able to minister to Coe Church of God. I've never been here before. I mean, first time in this area, got lost a couple times. Amen. Trying to get here. I think I may be in trouble. I ran through a toll booth. <laughs> Amen. And I, we're not used to toll booths where I come from. And, uh, and I got ran, I pulled up to it and it said, this is cash on. I said, well, I don't have no cash. <laughs> so I just went on. I, I figured they will. <laughs> Amen. But uh, well, I'm so honored to be here. So honored to be with your pastor. Amen. He's talking about picking my brain. I come around, and this man is organized and in order. I thought, man, I need to pick his brain. <laughs> Amen. Everything is in detail, and I appreciate that. Amen. I tell singers, when they come to my church, people want to start singing. I said, look, amen, I'm not going to. He said, just call me up to sing. They said, just call me up. I'll sing. I said, no, you won't, not till you practice and get it right. You don't expect me to get up behind the pulpit, amen, and minister if it ain't right. I expect you to get it right before you sing. I appreciate the detail, the attention to detail, the order of it all, amen. Appreciate that so much. Praise the Lord. The book of 1 Peter chapter 1, amen, verse 1 and 2. I've been preaching out of 1 Peter in my church. God has just been just revealing this, opening this up, amen. And when pastor asked me to come here, he laid this on my heart. To bring this. Amen. Peter's dealing with the church. He is talking directly to the church. And he's showing the church how to live victoriously and how to live in revival and to be absolutely effective. Amen. And I'm looking forward to what the Lord has in store for us in this house today. First Peter chapter 1, verse 1 and 2. Amen. Peter, he's, say, he's writing here. He said, Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, Bithynia, elect. 
I love that. Amen. Elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ grace unto you and peace be multiplied. Amen. Brother Thomas, would you bless this word for us? Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. First Peter chapter 1, verse 1 and 2. I'm going to read it one more time. Amen. Before I read it, let me do say this. I forgot to say it. The boy's playing the piano so pretty. Amen. I completely forgot to say this. Amen. My wife. I'm used to having my wife here with me. Amen. This is my second time traveling without her, and I'm lost. Last time I did that, by the end of that revival, that preacher told me, he said, I am sick and tired of hearing Dana's name. Amen. He told his congregation, I, he ain't coming again without his wife. So your pastor may say that after this revival is over. Amen. We just moved, like pastor told you, and we've moved our kids into some new schools. My wife has been fighting some wisdom tooth infection. She had them pulled out Friday. Her, woke up, her jaws were swollen this morning. And uh, so she wanted to come. And I trust me, I wanted her here, but... Amen. She couldn't come. So I'm going to ask you this. Uh, musicians who plays during the altar, I'm used to having my wife here. So she knows when I ask everybody to stand, y'all just come on up. Amen. Because uh, I, I will forget to say it. Praise the Lord. Amen. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 1 through 2. I'm going to read it one more time. It said, Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the stranger scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, Elect according to the foreknowledge of God, the Father, through sanctification of the Spirit, unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Grace be unto you, and peace be multiplied. When you look at this letter, and you see that at the very beginning of the Scripture, amen, it's clear that this letter was written to people that were Gentiles. Amen. He's not talking to the, the Israelites. He's not talking to a Jewish nation. He's talking to Gentiles. Amen. And in this verse, in this text, he's showing them that they had been released from a useless way. Amen. Once considered as dogs and other and unworthy, unclean, not able to partake of the fullness of God. Amen. But now they're released from this. Uh, amen. Way that they had learned from their inheritance or the fathers. Amen. You find in 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 18, it shows us when it says, For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed uh, with corruptible things. Hey, your, your past, your, your, your inheritance from your fathers did not do this for you as silver and gold. Uh, riches did not bring this from your vain conversations uh, by traditions from your fathers. Uh, he's saying your flesh didn't do this. Amen. You didn't get here because of your last name. Amen. Your heritage didn't bring you here. Amen. Uh, there ain't but one direction that brought you to this place. Uh, he shows them. Amen. As those that were once as 1 Peter 2 and 10 shows us uh, when he said which in time past were not a people uh, but are now the people of God uh, which had not obtained mercy but now obtained mercy. And you, if you look at that. Amen. And that, that whole context of scripture. Amen. In chapter, in chapter 2 verse 4 through 10. Uh, amen. He's talking about the system of the church. Uh, and what a beautiful thing he's talking about right there because he's not dealing with the Jewish nation. He's not dealing with Israelites. Uh, he's dealing with those that were once unworthy of this. Uh, amen. How did he begin it with? He began it with Jesus. Amen. Uh, hey, you cannot have the system without Christ. Uh, you can't have the system of a child of God uh, without the first 
cornerstone, uh, the foundation of this, uh, though he was rejected of men, amen, uh, though he was disallowed of men, uh, God honored him to be above the rest. So the foundation began with Christ. Uh, you look at what he, what he went to from Jesus. Uh, he went to the church. Uh, he showed the church as the part of the system. Uh, amen. Showing that amen, we cannot find our place uh, in the kingdom of God, uh, which uh, without being a part of the body which is the church. God did not mean to isolate us or separate us or move us aside above somebody else, amen. God meant for us to be in the function of the system of the church. And it was in that function, amen, that we find in the system of the church that there we find the mercy and the grace of God. We find the peace of God for what purpose? That we build a kingdom of God. But we cannot do it without Jesus. We cannot do it without the church. We cannot find mercy without that system in order. But once we find mercy, then we can effectively build a kingdom of God, uh, which he said is above people. Uh, amen. And it find, how do we find this place? Uh, amen. That Because it came through a people uh, that were once not a people, but were now a people. Uh, amen. Which had not obtained mercy, but now had obtained mercy. So looking at the beginning of this chapter, and the outstanding thing about this passage uh, is that it takes the words of conception which had originally applied to the Jews, a chosen nation, and begins to apply them to the Gentiles. He's literally saying once you were not worthy, Amen. Uh, once you did not have the name, uh, once you were not able to find this, uh, but now I'm calling you. I'm writing to you uh, as those that await you so glad tonight. Amen. Uh, and he didn't have to save us, uh, but he loved us so much. Uh, he was willing to look uh, in our wretched state uh, and call us out from our sins, uh, save our souls, uh, and change our lives. Uh, Amen. Uh, he applies this. He believed that these people were once outside of the mercy of God, but now in the mercy of God. Now the privileges, now the mercy, now the grace of God has gone out to all the earth, even to those, amen, that could not be expected to be in them. I remember one time, amen, I, I come up in church. My uncle was my pastor, amen, but I grew up under an adulterous father. Amen. Uh, I, I grew up in a mess is what I grew up in. Uh, amen. We, we, we got stuck in the middle of it as children. Uh, amen. It, it caused our life to be turmoil. Uh, amen. I, I'm telling you, it was a mess. Uh, and I remember one time I was at a youth camp and a youth leader, a youth, the youth director looked at me. Amen. And he said, you're going to be just like your father. Amen. Uh, I, I was rowdy. I was on drugs as a teenager. Amen. By the time I was 16, I had a criminal record. Amen. They were looking to put me in a juvenile facility and he looked at me and he said you're going to be just like your father but I am so thankful amen that those words did not stick I deserve the penalty of death and the penalty of sin amen but when I found Jesus amen on a June night when I was 16 years old in that very same youth camp under that very same youth it wasn't about him amen he found me where I was and was willing to save me and change my life and make a difference amen the same mercy and the privileges and the grace of God has now made access not not just to a certain people, uh, but absolutely to every one of us uh, by the plan, the order, the system, uh, and the power of God. Look at what Peter calls them now. He begins to speak to them in the language that was only spoken to the children of Israel. He starts off when he calls them, amen, who they are. He said, you are the elect, amen, amen. A title once was only known for the children of Israel. You are the chosen of God. Amen. Let's, let's look at what God told the children of Israel in Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6. He said, Thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Look at that holy people to God, chosen to be special.
with God. Amen. Uh, above absolutely everyone upon the face of the earth. Uh, amen. But with all that promise, the children of Israel failed in the purpose of God. Uh, and whenever God was willing to send his only begotten son into the world, uh, they rejected him uh, and crucified him. Uh, and you find in Mark chapter 12 and verse 9 uh, that Christ said, told us that because of their rejection, uh, because of their failure, that he will give the vineyard uh, to others. Amen. Because those were not willing to partake or to receive the plan of God. Amen. He was going to send it out to others. So now the mercy of God has gone out to all the ends of the earth. All the nations now can see the glory of God, can experience the grace of God. Amen. The power of God. So what he's showing us here that those that were once unworthy, amen, now can be called to be a special people. Amen. Can be called to be holy holy and close to God uh, can be called to be different from everyone else uh, and brought out from amongst everyone else. Uh, amen. He begins to show us two great titles uh, that belongs to us as children of God. He begins to break down the system uh, and the order of how we should be uh, and what we should be as children of God. First, uh, he not only said, are you the elect or the chosen of God? Uh, amen. He said that you are the elect uh, according to Amen. It is a special honor. Amen. That God would even look in our direction and call us to this. It's a special blessing that God would be willing to reach down and save us from this and to make a difference. But he didn't stop there because the phrase according to shows a challenge. It shows a responsibility here. Amen. It shows a difference. It shows that God always chooses us for service. He don't choose us just to sit back. He chooses us to be a part. He chooses us to work as a part, to move as a part. Amen. The honor which God gives us, amen, is the honor of being used for his plans and his purposes. The fact that we are chosen means that the honor and the work of God is literally delivered into our hands. Amen. That, that, that which was once called uh, to be somebody else's. Uh, amen. Was now looked to those. Uh, amen. That were without. Uh, uh, that did not deserve it. Uh, that did not have the plan of the last name. But now God is looking uh, and saying I'm calling you to be the elect chosen. Uh, I'm calling you close to me. I'm calling you to a cleanness. Uh, I'm calling you to be above everyone else. Uh, but now I'm giving you responsibility to make a difference. Uh, Listen, when I was 16 and God saved me, amen, uh, and delivered me from drugs, delivered me from suicide, delivered me from depression, uh, I had to leave that youth camp uh, and keep on walking, uh, keep on serving the Lord, keep on making it with Him. But I could not find that in my own strength. My own strength was a place of failure. I didn't have the ability to do this, so what did I have to do? I had to rely on the strength, the plan, and the power of the Lord. I remember when I first left that place, amen, the, hey, I went to a friend of mine's house, amen, the first thing they did was offer me, amen, what I got delivered from. Put it right in my face, and I had to make the decision there, amen, what am I going to do here? What difference am I going to make? Am I going to go back to sin or am I going to leave sin alone? Amen. Am I going to turn it down or am I going to surrender to sin? And I had to make up my mind there to leave that place and to move forward and to leave that place of sin alone. I found myself a few months later, amen, going back to another friend's house. Amen. Same thing. Amen. They offered me what I got delivered from. And this time they're begging me, come on, we want our friend back. We just want our buddy back. Amen. I had to make a decision there to get up and leave that place. Listen, young people, uh, amen, it was hard. That was a hard decision to make, uh, amen, to say to myself, I'm leaving my friend's house, uh, and I'm never coming back again. Uh, but you know what? I didn't have to walk there on my own. Uh, come on. Uh, I had a responsibility. God had called me to be one of his chosen, uh, one of his elect. Uh, he didn't have to look down in my sinful state. Uh, he could have left me on that floor to die, uh, amen, given up my life. Uh, but he loved me that much. He was willing to reach down his hand, uh, and now I was called 
called according to, uh, the elect according to the purpose chosen uh, to be the instrument of God. Uh, that ain't just calling us to preach and to do great things, church. Uh, amen. That's calling us to overcome sin and the plan of sin uh, and the work of sin uh, and letting that devil know, my God, somebody, amen. Uh, listen, you know the work in the covenant, uh, amen, the, through, through the old covenant and the new covenant, the purpose of a covenant, uh, it's a commitment. It's an agreement between God and his people. But it's a two-fold agreement because it's, agree it's an agreement between the people and with God. It's, God is literally saying, I will give you the ends of this world. I will give you power. I will give you strength. I will give you ability. But in the same agreement, you have to agree to give your everything to me. I preached on this last night, amen, out of the book of 1 Corinthians, uh, amen, chapter 15, uh, amen, that, that, on that little word all, amen, when he said that we must give all things under his feet, uh, amen, he will recognize it all for what purpose? Uh, that God would be all in all. Uh, it's that place when we learn to realize the all of God uh, and realize the all of sin in our life that robs us from God. Uh, but understand that God sent Jesus, uh, amen, to wash that all of sin away, uh, amen, that we we can come to the place of all surrender, amen, that we can find all of the power of the Holy Ghost to give us that all of faith. That's the plan, that's the work that draws us into this, amen. So what we find in the covenant, amen, we make a commitment that we have everything from God, but in return, we must be willing to surrender our everything back to him. But the failure in the old, the old covenant was beautiful and perfect. But what it did was reveal sin. It could tell people what to do, what not to do. But it could not give them the strength, the ability, the ability or the power not to do it. So it just condemned them in sin. But when Jesus came and made access into a new and better covenant, not only did you get the law of the old, but you get, you gain the grace of the new that give you the ability to fulfill the law of the old. That's the purpose. That's what he's calling us to. And we are chosen to God. We are chosen to serve God. Amen. And when I say that, I'm not just telling you to do it. I'm telling you that he's given you power and the equipment to be the tools and the hand of God. Oh, I left that night. Amen, I made up my mind. I'll never go back. The Lord is too much to me. Amen, I fought, faced loneliness on my own. Didn't think I had any friends, nobody to turn to. I found myself as a 16-year-old, amen, waking myself up in the morning on my knees because I prayed myself to sleep every night. But you know what? When I left that next day, I may not have had them old friends, but I had Jesus walking right beside me. Amen, hallelujah. And you know what 20 years later he's still holding my hand he's still leading me on he's still guiding me through why because we are called to be the elect chosen according to the plan and the work of God Amen. This word according to it shows us that responsibility. It shows us the honor that God gives us to be used for him. The fact that we are chosen means, amen, that the honor and work of God is literally delivered into our hands. It was there that the Jews failed and they could not carry the responsibility of it. And we got to see fit that us ourselves do not fail in this responsibility. Ability. Philippians 2 and 12, Paul wrote it well uh, when he said, Wherefore, my beloved, uh, as ye have always obeyed, uh, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. Uh, but what did he say right here? He said, To work out your own salvation uh, with fear and trembling. Now, a lot of times we misinterpret the scripture. But if you look in the Greek in that phrase, to work out, it literally means to work it out all the way to the end. It literally means, amen, that you have a responsibility not to settle for a little bit of your salvation. Amen. Not to settle for a little bit of the plan of God, but it's your responsibility, amen, to reach out according to the full purpose and the plan of God. I don't know about you, but I don't like a piece of the pie. Amen. We have a sister in our church. She makes the best peanut butter pie ever. Amen. Every pastor's appreciation day, I know I'm going to get me one, maybe two 
peanut butter pies. I'll pull that rascal out the fridge and I'll go to cutting in that thing. I got a little eight, nine year old. Amen. He is a chunky nine year old. That baby likes to eat. I ain't never seen a young and like to eat so much. And it's almost like he can hear the knife pierce the top of that peanut butter pie. I'm trying to, because I want my pie. That's my pie. I'm cutting that pie. Here he comes. Man, I, his nose like a bloodhound looking for a pie. Daddy, can I have a piece of that pie? Son, this is daddy's pie. I want all this pie. But you know I give him a piece of my pie. Amen. But I want all, if I can. If he don't, he's going to sniff me out. As soon as he gets a piece, that, that 11-year-old's going to want a piece. Then that 17-year-old's going to come in there and try to take half the pie from me. Amen. But if I can get it, I want all that pie to myself. As soon as they go to school, guess what? I'm looking in that second pie. Amen. I'm trying to eat every bit of it before they get home. Amen. I want all the pie. Amen. That's the same thing with a Why settle for a little bit of what God has? Amen. Uh, Why well, settle for a little bit of the anointing and the salvation uh, and the glory and the authority and the power that God desires and has for you? Uh, Why well, settle for just a piece of it uh, and a part when you can have it all? Uh, he set this as a work inside of your hand uh, and we have a responsibility as he's calling you to be the elect, uh, as he's calling you to be the chosen, uh, he's calling you to be the part of the plan uh, and the work of God. Uh, he's calling you to take every bit of it and don't settle for none less than the full purpose of God. What he was saying when you work out your own salvation he said work out it to the end and do not stop until you absolutely receive the complete reward and the plan of God. Oh, he showed us, amen, at the second, at the same time in the verse, we're called literally strangers, exiles of eternity in this place. It shows us, amen, that, 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 that we are withdrawn from this world, but at the same time, it is to say that we, in the realest sense that we are still in this world. A lot of times, we forget a lot of times that even though we are the called and the elect, we think that we're called and the elect to completely be different, shut ourselves up, and do nothing else. But we got to realize we are still a part of this world. Amen. And in that being strangers, exiles of eternity, we must realize that we're in this world for a reason. Amen. Not to be a part, but to overcome the sins. Amen. In the Greek, it shows us. Amen. It explains us that this is a direct word uh, for the English word perish. Amen. The Christian in any place. The perish in any place is a people whose eyes are always uh, turned to God. Hebrews 13 and 14 says it like this. He said for the, here we have no continuing city but we seek one to come. Paul said in Philippians 3 and 14, he said, I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. He's showing us as we are strangers in this land, how do we have the power and the ability to follow his plan according to the purpose of God, completely to the purpose of God. I'll tell you how. It's getting so focused. Amen. On the work of heaven and on the plan that God has set for you. When Paul wrote that, he said, amen, I, I pressed toward the mark. It's showing a place that he literally said, I'm looking beyond all the pain, all the distraction, all the heartache, and I'm getting so focused on Jesus that it doesn't matter. Oh, he would face a Roman soldier, but he looked beyond that soldier to find Jesus at the end. Amen. He would face prison bars and prison walls, but he would look beyond the prison bars and walls. Amen. To see Jesus at the end. You know, they threw him to wild animals. Studies show. Amen. He said, Amen. He, he, you find different stories in scripture, ideas and hints of what Paul did. Amen. Studies, history shows us, amen, that Paul was thrown in the arenas. It was a popular thing for Christians to be persecuted in, in arenas with wild animals at that time. And Paul was a prized prisoner. Amen. But history shows that when the soldiers would throw him in and they would let the wild animals loose, that they would come up and never open their mouth. And he would willingly slay them because the power of God. Why? Because he was focused on the plan and the work of God. 
He got so focused on heaven and he got so focused on Jesus, which is the mark. Amen, that the pain did not matter. Listen, church, it don't matter what we face. It don't matter what opposition comes against us. It doesn't matter what hell can bring to us. We can get so focused on the plan and the reality that we are saved, that we can be saved, that we can find a difference, that we can touch Jesus, that no opposition can matter in this world. Why? Because the plan of God trumps absolutely every opposition that can come against us. Yeah. Amen. This ain't something new I'm preaching to you. Amen. This is for eternity. God set this plan in place all the way from the beginning. Amen. But then we look in verse 2. We're confronted with three great facts of the Christian life. Amen. First, the Christian is the elect chosen according to what? To the foreknowledge of God. One commentator says it better than I can preach it. I'm going to read what he's saying. He said, if all our attention, listen to this, if all our attention is concentrated on the hostility or the indifference of the world or the demand of our own progress in the Christian life, we may be well discouraged. At such times, we need to be reminded that our election is not according to us, but our election is according to the foreknowledge of God the Father. The church is not just a human organization, though of course it is that. Its origins lies not in the will of the flesh, in the idealism of men, in the human aspirations and plans, but in the eternal purpose of God. What is he saying? Amen. That we are the elect chosen according to with the responsibility to the foreknowledge of God. He was saying that when you are discouraged, you can remind yourself that we came and being. Amen. God created.